who's ready for some Filmstruck Film Club? I know Groot is. I know you are, because I am. What's up? We're here. We're doing it. I'm Carson Higgins, your host. Already said that my buddy Groot is here. He's our co-host. And we are the Filmstruck Film Club. I mean, not just him and I. You're you're clearly a part of it. Maybe you're not. So if you aren't, go ahead and follow us, man. Follow us at, at Filmstruck Film Club on Instagram. We're on YouTube. There's a Facebook group if you're 100 years old. There's a million ways to hang with us and watch these great films. And we watched a really good one this week. I say that a lot, but it's because we're usually picking classics. So, like, how, how bad could they ever really be? This particular film uh, is one that I've been meaning to watch for a very long time. When I first got the Criterion channel and I loaded up my watch list, this was one of the first things I put on there. So it's been sitting there. I, I see it all the time when I'm trying to pick something to watch. But uh, it is the... It's like noted as as like the first film in in what's the Australian new wave uh, we have watched a film by this director before uh, if you've been with us for a while maybe you recall we watched don't look now uh, which is another film by this director Nicholas Rogue uh, and this is his 1971 film walkabout this movie I I kind of knew that someday I was gonna I was gonna be in the right headspace to watch that movie and, it, and I was going to gift myself this, this spiritual journey. And though I may have I ha maybe had loftier hopes than what I was uh, inevitably given, uh, I still had a very moving experience watching this movie. I, I watched it uh, by myself during the day, uh, and I, I like got to go on my own little walkabout with this movie, which was really great. Uh, <clears throat> for if, you've, if you've never heard of it, you have no idea what I'm talking about. Uh, it is early 1970s. We're in Australia. Uh, we, we hear this didgeridoo music, we hear these kids like singing in a choir, we're like in the city, I think we're in Sydney, uh, everything's very, you know, modern, industrial, things are happening. Uh, and then like, boom, before you know it, we are in the middle of the outback, lost, with just dad, daughter, and little kid, son. Um, and it just like, you're kind of like, wait, are we, are we lost? Oh shit, we're out of gas, like, you're, we're kind of all over the place at first trying to figure out kind of what, what how we're gonna get this story started. And I did not see this coming. Uh, but you know, the little kid's running around playing with a squirt gun and the daughter's like setting up a picnic and the dad's being kind of weird. Uh, but then he starts shooting at the son with a real gun. And then the daughter who's substantially older, she's probably 16, he's like nine or 10, something like that. She covers him and like the dad's fully shooting at them and you're you're like, oh fuck, he's like trying to kill the kids and then him and then of course he lights the car on fire and kills himself and leaves them in the middle of the outback. There's nothing around. These kids are fucked. <laughs> and and they start off into the desert. And like a really good big sister, of course. She she instantly is taking care of her little brother. She doesn't let him see the the carnage of what happened with her dad. She doesn't even really tell him exactly what happened. She's just like, he's going to meet us later. We, we got to go. Uh, so I really do love their relationship, like right right away and throughout the film. I think that she she does such a great job taking care of him, and he's such a cute little kid. It's Nicholas Rogue's son, Luke, who is playing that role, uh, which is, is, it just makes it all the better because you know that, you know, dad and son are on set together out in the outback all these weeks or months or however long we filmed it, and you really get that sense like from the film that like even though we're watching the story that it's like it's a family affair to make this thing um of course then this film is famous because we do our two leads do meet up with a third individual an, a young aboriginal boy who is on his walkabout the thing i appreciate is that it's never said outright i don't believe that that's what he's doing the film is called walkabout and you may or may not know that Aborigines, uh, their tradition is that at like a certain age, you go live on the land by yourself and learn how to connect to it. And when you come back to the tribe, you're like an adult. Uh, it's a very common, you know, ritual of, of what do they call it? Uh, uh, I forget. Uh, initiation, maybe, into like the higher ups. Anyway. There's a lot of that in this film where we don't just like come right out and tell you what they're doing. It's not like the little boy says, what's he doing? He's on his walkabout, which is something they have. We don't do that. It's also something I noticed much later in the film. He is painted and has these like 
flowers and is kind of acting maybe like a bird or something. And he keeps being referred to as like dancing. Like, why is he dancing? And he does it until he basically falls asleep. Uh, but you could interpret it, and perhaps this is a correct interpretation, I don't know, that it's like a mating ritual that he's trying to like get with the girl. Uh, but it's just an example of, of another instance of we're not just coming out and telling you stuff, which is maybe the greatest strength of, of the film is that so much of it is experiential. You're, you're out there with these, with these young kids and you're in turn, you're watching them kind of connect to this vast wilderness. And I read a review where the, it's like kind of a, a metaphor or something for like the Garden of Eden, this like untouched, pure, innocent, beautiful land and then we have these like interspersed scenes that like seemingly are there for no reason where randomly it's just like a group of white adults who are either like scientists or like the people who are making the pottery and have like the slaves <laughs> i'm not really sure what's going on there on that plantation or whatever but there's these like random scenes like the, the weather balloon scientists or whatever uh and it's almost like you're you're just given these little vignettes of how like modern white Western society has like destroyed and damaged and taken away the innocence of this beautiful untouched earth. And so like that element is very much a part of this film, but it's never beaten into you, which is always such a nice thing that a, a filmmaker, if they're able to walk that tightrope to, to make their point clearly without ever having to say, this is the point of the movie. Um, yeah, there's some incredible cinematography in this film. I found out only from doing my research that Nicholas Rogue was a cinematographer before he became a director. This is only his second film, by the way, Walkabout. Um, but it just added up to me. I was like, oh, Don't Look Now is like this stunning piece of photography. Walkabout, stunning piece of photography. It just makes sense that he knows the shit. Uh, but there's some iconic shots of the sun and of just the outback and these wonderful zoom-ins on like an insect and these dolly zooms of lizards and snakes and trees and my favorite shot is just him, the, the aborigine guy like at sunrise standing on one leg and you see the sun rising and it's like the poster or one of the posters. It's just a beautiful piece of imagery but I, I was just very taken aback with this whole film. I, I, I was really glad that we watched it. I'm glad I like finally checked it out. It, it's nice when you have a film like this that you've been like maybe putting on a pedestal or putting out in the future is like, I'm gonna watch that and I'm looking forward to whenever that comes. And it came for me with this film and I'm, I'm so pleased. Love Nicholas Rogue, love this movie. Everything I've seen from the, the, the Australian New Wave has been like really cool, original, good looking shit. So, I'm gonna keep going, man. I'm gonna keep diving in. I, I, there's more to be seen, I'm certain of it. Uh, but yeah, I, I don't really have much else to say other than uh, there is quite a bit of animal violence in this movie. So I, I, I know I took too long to probably tell you if you were, if you ran off to watch this movie already. Uh, but yeah, there, there's there's parts. I mean, it's almost like a nature documentary in a way because we we watch him like really hunting a kangaroo or lizards or whatever, and he straight up spears them and like guts them and and it's real. And so for some, it's it's probably difficult, but. Another thing that Nick Rogue does that's so smart is like there's there's that pretty substantially graphic hunting scene with the kangaroo, but it is intercut with a butcher in a shop in Sydney cutting up meat. How is it so different, I guess? You know, it's like it's kind of a nice juxtaposition of the modernity of the like butcher doing this in kind of a sterile environment and our Aboriginal on walkabout hunting to eat. They're going to not eat. No. So, yes, there's some, there is some, like, violence to real animals in this movie. So, if, if that's something that's really going to turn you off, you're probably not going to like this movie. But uh, it is all there, you know. Like I said, almost like you're watching an episode of Planet Earth or something. I mean, you've watched a lion eat the fuck out of a gazelle. So, it's like, you know, where do you think your meat comes from? Anyway, enough of the soapbox. Follow us, man, because we're watching movies all the time. So, get on Filmstruck Film Club. Let me know uh, if you want to watch something. I love taking recommendations. If you're just finding out about us, woo, you got a lot of catching up to do. T do it at your own pace, of course. But uh, feel free to go back in there. You can go check out our Letterboxd. Uh, it's just my Letterboxd, but if you look up Filmstruck Film Club, it says what we've watched so far, and it's all in order. Check it out. Uh, much love to you guys. I'll talk to you soon. New pick coming tomorrow. So we're, we'll be back. We're doing this again. Peace.